Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to swatch out a few colors that I want to light fast test again. And I don't know if there's any, I think I've got all the colors that I want to test. I hope I have all the colors that I want to test here. What it's strong in mass tone and then water it down because that's probably where it's gonna fade first. More honest, but so yes, I've got twelve different paints in my stash here, and I'm not sure if I've forgotten anything. I might have, so I may have to add some more in the future. But these are the ones that I want to test for now. So this is Schmincke Cochineo Red NR. 4 colon 1 which is almost definitely fugitive and I expect to see some fading over the summer and if you've seen my other light fast tests if you've seen my previous light fast tests I've done I've start, done one in, in, in January one in February and one in March and we'll take a look at these later in a bit but for now, I want to get these swatched out. And because I've added a couple more colors in the meantime with questionable light fast ratings or where I know or where I very much expect them to fade because I do expect this red to fade. It's not light fast. And the Schmincke Horadam Prussian Blue that was not part of my initial brush and blue light fast testing. And I really want to see if this changes because I've, we've seen quite a bit of change in the Van Gogh and the Craftimo brush and blues, but they are, they're not as pigmented as this one is because they're student grade paints. And so it's going to be quite interesting to see what, what difference it makes. And I've got the Van Gogh version somewhere on here as well, later on. And we will be taking a look at the Prussian blue swatches in a bit. And this is Schmincke Olive Green, which is a mixture of PB15 and PG8. And the PG8 in there is potentially not that light fast. Which is a shame because I really like this green. I bought this, I bought this quite a while ago, like when I first started watercolor painting ages ago, and when I wasn't really paying attention to light fast ratings and anything. And I just bought it because I like it. And I mean I still like it, it's a gorgeous green, but I guess this is gonna be interesting because the green ones are going to be the first the ones that I have been in the window only for about a month now and I guess it's going to be interesting to see if there's any if there's any changes and the reason why I've decided to do it again is because I think now that we're past the spring equinox and where the light, I do actually get quite a bit of good sunlight every day, several hours in my west facing window here. So the next one I'm gonna swatch is Schmincke Hardem Random Gray, which is just a mixture of all sorts of leftover random pigments that they had at the end of production. And because you don't know what's in there, you can't be sure if it's light fast or not. So I thought I'll just Seeing as I've got three Schmincke paints on here already, I might as well put this on and see what happens. Because if it turns out this doesn't fade very much, or doesn't change very much in the sunlight, I might use it for the work as well, because I really like this. This is just, it's great to give anything a bit of granulation. So then here is Winsor & Newton Alizarin Crimson, PI83, the original Alizarin Crimson, which is also not light fast, but I mean, given it was it was the February light fast test, and it's still not going to have gotten quite a lot of sunlight, and it was only out there for a month, but I didn't see any change in this one after a month, and from 
everything that people have said about it, how quickly it, it changes color. I was kind of surprised not to see any change at all, especially since we had quite a bit of sun in February as well. So it did get some sunlight, but I didn't see any change after a month. So it's going to be interesting to see if it has changed now after it's been in the window for almost all of March as well. So this is Rosa Carmine PR 170 colon one. And again, it's a lovely, really gorgeous, strong, intense pink, but it fades, or so people say. So, and this is Rosa Madder Red, which is a mix of PR177 and PR264, and it's the PR177 in here. That is not that light fast. So I don't know if I've finished my explanation. The reason I've decided to do it again is because to me it makes it makes more sense having thought about it. It makes more sense to have all the paints that I want to test going up at the same time so I don't have to keep track of how long they've been in the window. And because it is the end of March now, so we have more daylight hours. We should be getting quite a bit of sunshine. And hopefully that means we will be able to see some changes in these. And this is Rosa Gallery Opera Rose, and it's a mixture of PR 122 and a fugitive dye. Flure fluorescent dye, which is fugitive, is what I meant to say, sorry. And again, I didn't see that much of a change in this one after a month, but again, it is only a month. It was only a month. And I just I just want to see how how it changes. Well, this is the Van Gogh Prussian Blue PB27 and I've seen this is the one that's been in the window for the longest because this has been in the window since um, December last year actually. And I'm pretty sure we will be seeing some more changes or we'll be seeing like in a second when I take and show you the strips that I've had in the window for like one, two, three months. And I'm sure we'll see we'll see more change. And I think I don't think we saw there was that much of a change after one month, but there was a noticeable change after two months. And then I've had I have another Prussian blue. But why am I telling you this now? You can just see that in a second. So I just swatch, and then we'll talk about the changes in a bit. But yeah, I just thought I want to include this again as well. Just also to be able to compare it to the um, Schmenke Horror Dam one. I can tell you this requires some palette juggling here. So this is Michael Harding Sunset Orange or Orange Sunset. I cannot remember how which way it goes. I will put the correct name in the description below, which is PO34, which is apparently also fugitive. And I, again, when I was um, buying the Michael Harding colors. I wasn't really looking at light fastness for whatever reason. And I got a couple that might be questionable. So I thought, well, seeing as I'm light fast testing, might as well put them on. And I hope this will actually turn out not to, not to fade, but I mean, if people say it's fugitive, it probably is. Which is a shame because it's a gorgeous orange, I love it. And then this is Michael Harding Transparent Yellow Oxide or Transparent Oxide Yellow again. Correct name will be in the description below. Which is PY42. It's kind of surprising that that would be fugitive, but 
that was my bad. I wasn't really paying attention because even the description on the Michael Harding website or on my my color chart says that is it doesn't label it as fugitive, but it doesn't give it the highest light fast rating. So I just want to see want to put it in the window over the summer and see how it goes. And then with these, I think I will leave these in, in the window for quite a while now before we take a look. So like for at least three months, it's, yeah, it's the end of March now. So I think the first time I want to take a look at them is maybe the end of June and see how that has changed. So they'll get three months of sunlight. So the last one is uh, Rosa Gallery Magenta Rose. And I haven't really given me a lot of myself a lot of space here, have I? And I'm really just curious. I want to see if this changes at all or not. Rosa say give it three. Oh, do they give it three or do I give it two out of three light for, for light enough fastness? Can't remember. Hang on, can I see? No, they do give it three out of three stars for light fastness. But again, some people say PR 122 is not as light fast as PV19. So I want to see if there's gonna be any change here all right then okay let's have a look this is the one that was in the window the one on the left i'll probably have to turn it around i don't remember and this is the one that was yeah okay this is the way this is the way it was so this is the window side this this is the window and the ones that were in the window these are the ones that are, have been in the dark so now I flip it around. So the window ones are on the right and the ones in the dark are on the left. And now they're the right way around. So the first one is Schmincke Academy. And um, I think I don't still don't see any change in there. And I'm, I'm always kind of questioning if, and questioning if that is really PB27 or not. Oh. No, I don't see. I don't see much of a change, to be honest. And then the second swatch here is the Van Gogh Prussian Blue, and I mean, it is. It hasn't. It hasn't really changed much more, I think. But you can see it's. It's a little bit less. I hope you can see this on camera it's a little bit less vibrant than the one on the right and it's not a massive amount that it's faded but there is a certainly there's a visible change it's not so much that it's faded it's just it got a little bit duller a, bit, a little bit less blue and the third one is the craftamo paint which is potentially the same as Cotman, but I'm not entirely sure. I think they're made by Phoenix, but I don't know. And I don't also don't really know if Phoenix make Cotman now or not. But there you can see, you can see a definite change. And I think the camera picks this up as well. Let me check here. Yeah, you can definitely see it's less saturated and it's it's less it's less blue and it's quite if you didn't, if I didn't know that th those are the same, the same paint, I wouldn't even think they are the same paint. With the Van Gogh version, it's not quite as obvious a shift, but with the Craft Demo version, it's definitely visible. And then the last one is the Derwent uh, Graphite Tint XL Block Dark Prussian, and I don't think I see a change in there, but I mean, it's a mixture of maybe pigment and graphite anyway so i just put it on there because it had prussian in the name but yeah and of the four on here i've only put the van gogh version on my testing strip so we'll we'll be able to see observe this again i guess and maybe Maybe I will actually take this now and put it in the dark with the other one 
now that I've got my new light fast testing and I mean I've already I've already seen that this one fades quite a bit or changes quite a bit and this one again is gonna get some more sunlight on a new swatch so I think I will put this in the dark and maybe we'll see if they recover once they've been in the dark for a bit so that's the blue ones then here we have the the reds that I've swatched and like this hang on let me make sure these are the ones the ones on the top are the ones that were in the dark and the ones down here are the ones that were in the window and like again on first glance I don't see a huge amount of difference between those two and as you can see there are five five on here the one here this is permanent alizarin crimson from the cotman line pr206 so that is not supposed to change and i don't think it has changed at all but again i don't well okay this looks a little bit it looks this has gotten a little bit warmer maybe but i don't really see any fading which I find I find this quite surprising because from what other people have said, like the original Illusion Crimson PI eighty three, they are all saying that it doesn't take very long at all and doesn't even need a direct exposure to sunlight and it changes dramatically and this has not changed dramatically, it has maybe changed a little bit but I don't know. And again, the Rosa Carmine. There's not. A big visible change, I would think. Same goes for the matter red. And I would say the opera rose, the one that's been in the window, is a little bit duller. So you can see a little bit of a change there. I hope the camera picks this up. This is this is still brighter and more punchy. And this is a little bit more. Just looks a little bit more like magenta, really. But I guess that would make sense, wouldn't it? But yeah, I I don't think that I can see a massive change in the other and crimson, which I find quite interesting, to be honest. So it'll be interesting to see how, how these go and what kind of changes we see with these ones. And I haven't I haven't put the Cotman permanent alizarin crimson back on there because I thought it doesn't really need to be on there. I just did that in February because I was focusing on the reds. So and now let's take a look at the green ones. This is the one that was in the dark, and this is the strip that I've put in the window. So on the first one on there is the Rosa PG8. And do I see a difference? I don't think I do, to be honest. Oh, look at that. I forgot to swatch my Rosa PG8, didn't I? Well, that was silly of me. Okay, hang on. We'll be back in a second with more swatches. Wow, how did I forget that? How silly is that? Then the Schmincke Olive Green. Nope, I don't think I see a difference. Nope, I don't think I can see a difference there. And then the last one is the uh, Rosa Gallery Olive Green, which is because of the PY1 that's in there. That is probably the one that might give you a bit of trouble with fading, but I don't really see a difference here either. But those are the ones that I put in the window last. So they've only been there for f about four weeks now because it was February and February is a short month. So they've only been in the window for about four weeks, a bit more than four weeks, but not much longer. I really can't believe I nearly forgot my rosa green. That was incredible. 
I mean, I always go on about how sad I am that it's not light fast, but we'll switch the rose olive green first because the palette is still sitting on my desk right now and I need to get the rosa palette back. I think I said this when I swatched the the green the greens for the light fast testing. In the beginning I thought I wasn't going to be a big fan of this one, but I do actually quite like this green, so I might actually just buy it again for my studio palette. Seeing as rosa paints are so affordable. I might and when I say, I hope you can see this, I hope the camera picks it up. Where is it? Here, it's here. Can you see how much I've used this? So I do actually use this quite a bit. So and I do still have my Rosa Green PG8 and my main Rosa palette. Because sometimes when I paint with them, I want to use it. But again, I'm mindful of how I use it and what kind of work I use it for. But I mean, I recently did my own mixes and tried to mix similar greens with the colors that I have, the other paints that I have in this palette. And I actually mixed quite a few really, really gorgeous looking greens. So it may just have to be relocated and I might just put it in my studio palette because then I don't have to worry about accidentally using it but it is it is a lovely beautiful green it is even I think I like it even better than the Schmincke olive green which has PG8 in it but also phthalo blue so okay do let me know if you have any suggestions of two more paints that I could put on, put on here now that I've remembered you know what? Dioxazine purple. It's just called violet, isn't it? Yes. Because Rosa themselves give this two out of three stars for light fastness. The same as the green, actually. I guess it's going to be interesting to see if it actually fades or not. Because if it does, I don't actually use this as much as I thought I would. So if it would turn out that I needed to get rid of this, I think I wouldn't be super sad. I mean, not get rid of this, put it in, in the other palette. Put it in my studio palette because the studio palette is for just playing around in sketchbooks and figuring things out and not for work that I have ever any intention of selling. So. If it's in there, that's fine. And I don't have a violet in there anyway, so it might not be a bad thing. But as I said, I in but when I paint, I don't use it as much as I thought I would. I tend to mix I tend to mix violets with my blues and my reds. So okay, if you've got a, su a suggestion for the last one, do let me know in the comments. And let me know in the comments if you pay attention to light fastness and if you find it important and if you've done your own testing and anything else you would like to tell me. And please give the video a like. Consider subscribing to my channel if you aren't already subscribed. Because, you know, YouTube, blah, blah. I don't want to bore you with this, actually. But I would very much appreciate it if you did. And thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye now. Bye.